It is a great pleasure for me to, to attend this event. Uh, Prima Cove and I encountered each other on many occasions. Usually as adversaries. But as time went on, we shared a common conviction that the problems of this world, and especially the problems between the United States and Russia, needed to be solved by negotiation and by a common vision of the future. And I saw Primakov in his many positions and at the end he was the chairman of the Russian part of a track two division organization of which I was the American chairman which explored possibilities of cooperation and of between our two countries. So for me, coming here is always now the, an event in a long experience which started in the Cold War and developed in the recognition that a nuclear conflict between our two countries would be a disaster for humanity and has been strengthened by the realization that in the globalized world the interaction of our two nations is one of the key elements. Of course, I have had the honor of meeting Sergei Lavrov on many occasions and so it is, whether we agree on everything or not, we are meeting in an atmosphere of commitment to peaceful and constructive solutions. Now, I believe that at this moment, our two countries have an urgent responsibility and I believe an opportunity to make significant progress towards improving not only their relations but improving tense situations around the world by cooperative by cooperative act, uh, efforts. And in preparing for this meeting, it occurred to me also that one should point out that tensions between the United States and Russia are not a rare event. They have happened often before in human history, and they've been overcome often before. For example, when in the early stages of America's participation in world affairs. At the end of the 19th century, it found itself competing with Russia in Northeast Asia. And there were issues over access to Manchuria. I mentioned these events only to indicate that some of the difficulties one reads about today are not absolutely novel. In fact, at the beginning of the Russo-Japanese War, America supported uh, Japan on the theory that it was the weaker country. And then after the ba various battles showed that that was not the case, uh, it shifted 
to create a, to help bring about a more balanced situation in Northeast Asia. So, if one then reviews all the events that have occurred from the Bolshevik coup in 1917, which America did not recognize until 1933, uh, to the Cold War, I have made the point that we have had experience intense relations, but we also have the experience in overcoming these relations and that we are at a period now where we should apply the lessons of overcoming our, uh, our difficulties. In the In the uh, period after the disintegration of the Soviet Union, we uh, at first cooperated, and then many in Russia believed that the United States was taking advantage of the situation and a new period of tension developed. But anyway, we are now at a point where our presidents are meeting and we should examine what accounts for this cycle of improvement and occasional tension. Some people say this is in the nature of international affairs, that great powers always compete for power and prestige. And uh, this view infuses current official Russian thinking and some current American thinking. But even if we accept the fact that historically great powers have often been in conflict with each other, there are also other factors that are, that are key elements. And I think one of the important elements is that Russian and American perceptions of national security have been historically quite different. Historically, Russia has been focused on the challenge of defending a vast, sparsely populated territory with few natural barriers, a budding, powerful, and unstable neighbors. Security has been the primary concern of governments in Moscow and St. Petersburg. One means to that end has been to try to establish defensive borders and limiting foreign influence inside Russian controlled territory. In the United States, by contrast, the country once it established its dominant position in North America has been physically secure. As a trading nation, it has looked abroad less to control territory than to keep open markets for American goods and to secure foreign goods for American efforts. Each country, for more than the past 100 years, has pursued a variation of the policy of containment. Russia, to contain American dynamism. The United States, to contain Russian expansionism. These geopolitical conflicts 
have been reinforced by competing concepts of exceptionalism and conflicting values in forms of government. The idea of global leadership is almost part of the American foreign policy DNA. And the United States thinks of itself often not simply as a leader, but the leader. In a similar way, Russia for the past two centuries has positioned itself as the defender and advocate of a view of world order based first on religion, then on Marxist principles. For example, the Holy Alliance or Nicholas II's defense of monarchical legitimacy and then the notion of the communist period. These are characteristics that the nations have shared and uh, has and they have been in contact about it. Now, in the contemporary period, in the Cold War, we started with confrontation. But both sides learned that the consequences of confrontation could be catastrophe for mankind. And therefore, they often and gradually found themselves in conversation about controlling nuclear weapons and controlling conflicts in areas where we interacted. Now, lately, a whole new field of technology enabled societies to interact on each other. So that in the cyber world, for example, there are inevitable, and some not so inevitable interactions, which have consequences that need to be, that need to be discussed. So, and there are issues like Ukraine and Syria in which the United States and Russia can jointly make a contribution to healing the existing uh, crisis. So it is for all of these reasons that we have to consider what it is we seek to prevent, what it is that we seek to achieve. And to begin from the premise that we are pursuing a peaceful and constructive evolution in which neither side directs its measures either to undermine the other or to gain a specific advantage, but rather to see whether a cooperative outcome is conceivable. This is the spirit which I uh, have try to express it is the attitude with which we can approach the future. There are grievances each side has and they should be taken seriously. And they did not, they were not invented. But there are also opportunities and 
it has been my conviction based on the experience of many crises that in the end Russia and the United States become convinced that they need to make a uh, a common a common effort. We are at such a period today. We can enumerate the causes of disquiet, the uses of modern technology impacting on other countries, crises around the world that are looked at as potential conflicts between our two countries, and other matters of this nature. The issue will be whether we will find a vision of the world which we can share, a form of dialogue which we can sustain. And I'm optimistic that the, as my colleague Sergei here recommended, also expressed, I'm optimistic that in a recognition of the global nature of this world, the impact of each other of this new technology, and respect for the historical position of each country, we may be at the beginning of one of the constructive periods in Brazil American relations that I enumerated before. Thank you very much. It is a great pleasure for me to to attend this event. Uh, Prima Cove and I encountered each other on many occasions, usually as adversaries. But as time went on, we shared a common conviction that the problems of this world, and especially the problems between the United States and Russia, needed to be solved by negotiation situations around the world, by cooperative, by cooperative act, uh, efforts. And in preparing for this meeting, it occurred to me also that one should point out that tensions between the United States and Russia are not a rare event. They have happened often before in human history, and they've been overcome often before. For example, when in the early stages of America's participation in world affairs, at the end of the 19th century, it, and so it is whether we agree on everything or not, we are meeting in an atmosphere of commitment to peaceful and constructive solutions. Now, I believe that at this moment, our two countries have an urgent responsibility and I believe an opportunity to make significant progress towards improving not only their relations, but improving tension, an event in a long experience, which started in the Cold War 
and developed in the recognition that a nuclear conflict between our two countries would be a disaster for humanity and has been strengthened by the realization that in the globalized world the interaction of our two nations is one of the key elements. Of course, I have had the honor of meeting Sergei Lavrov on many occasions and by a common vision of the future. And I saw Primakov in his many positions and at the end he was the chairman of the Russian part of a track two division organization of which I was the American chairman which explored possibilities of cooperation and of between our two countries. So for me coming here is always now the 